Like many of you, I've been logging tons of hours playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. I also sometimes stream it on Twitch if you want to hang out with me over there, linked below. All of the amazing Animal Crossing cosplays that I've seen on Instagram have had me inspired to create my own, and I have to go with my favorite new villager, Audie! Sorry Raymond fans! Materials will be linked in the description and I invite you to follow along or take inspiration from my process. Let's jump to it! For the dress, I ordered two yards of this perfect pineapple fabric from Spoonflower in a cotton spandex jersey. The designer also has different pineapple size options on her Etsy. For the pattern, I like the neckline and size of this tank top I already own, so I'll use it as the base pattern. I've put a few pins at the waist so I can mark where to attach the skirt. Alternatively, a commercial pattern like Simplicity 1256 would be a good option too. Lately I've been using freezer paper for patterns because it's semi-transparent for tracing other patterns and relatively cheap. I'll lay out the tank top and carefully trace the front and back. On the sides and the bottom, I'm going to draw in an extra seam allowance of about a half inch. The neckline and the armholes I can leave as is because I'm going to create a bias tape to go basically on top of it, so I don't need to change where that line goes when I'm cutting the fabric. I'll compare the sides, neaten up my lines, and go with a half pattern that can be cut on a fabric fold. Before I cut up my fancy fabric, I need to test the pattern on cheap or leftover fabric so I can make sure that it's sized correctly. Mockups will save you from wasting your good fabric and ensure that you have the right fit. After I am 100% sure on my top pattern, I can calculate out my circle skirt. I need to find out the radius of the inner circle here. I know that the finished waist of the bodice is 31 inches, but I'm doing a half circle skirt. So 31 is only half of the circumference of the inner circle. So to use the equation, circumference equals 2 pi r, I need to use 62 for the circumference. r comes out to about 10. I want 18 inches for the length of the skirt, so when I go to draw this, I know that my first circle will be a radius of 10 from the center point, and the outer circle will be a radius of 28 from the center point. I know this can be confusing, so I'll leave a link below that can help you calculate this. I split the half circle skirt into two pieces so that I can have seams on the sides uh, so that I can add pockets, because why not? So there's a half inch seam allowance on the top, on the sides, and an extra one inch on the bottom to hem it. Now to pin the top front and back pieces right side to right side, then I can stitch them together at the sides and shoulders. I'll test the fit one more time, then serge those seams up as well. I realize I keep saying pin and then I'm using my clips. I like to use these along the edge of my fabric when I can, they're just a little bit quicker and easier than the pins. Wonder Clip is one of the name brands, but I just have generic ones from Amazon. The only adjustments I made after my mock-up was I took the armpit out just a little bit and the waist I angled in so it'd be a little bit more fitted. When sewing knits, my machine used to eat my fabric until I started using a tearaway stabilizer. It sold by the yard or in packages and I cut it into long strips, place it under my fabric, and it makes sewing knits so much easier. You just tear it off when you're done. I've also used tissue paper for this purpose, but it tends to be a bit messier. Now I'll add pockets to the skirt, but I'm gonna skip ahead to the next step because I have a video all about how to add pockets, which you should definitely give a watch. It'll be linked in the eye in the corner in the video description below. Once I have my skirt front and back pinned, I can quickly stitch up those sides and serge them for added durability. Ta-da! Skirt with nice pockets is done. Now I can sew the top and skirt at the waistline. To line this up, I want the skirt inverted and the top inside of the skirt like this. I want to make sure that the front is facing the front and the back is facing the back. I've also marked at the center front and center back on both pieces with washable pencil to give me another point to match up along the waistline. I'll pin the side seams and center point first, then match up the rest of the edge and stitch it on my machine. Good. 
It's recommended that the bias tape length be 80 to 90 percent of the actual neckline. So in my case, I cut out a 21 by 2 inch piece of the same fabric, including seam allowance. This is so it sits smoother and isn't so floppy. I've marked the center front and center back on both the dress and the bias tape so I can evenly space out the difference. I'll pin it right side to right side and then stitch at a half inch. And I will be stretching out the bias a bit to make it match up. Normally I'd fold this under and stitch, but it gets too bulky, so I'll just fold it once, pin, stitch along the same seam, and trim off the excess. Finally, the bottom hem. I'll fold under a half inch twice, and then sew along the edge. And that's about it for the dress. For the ears, I'm using orange fur, blue fur, and warbler, plus an X-Acto blade and heat gun to cut and shape them. I found a League of Legends R8 Fox ear pattern, which I think will work perfectly for Adi. In this direction? Or go in this direction. I'm gonna go ahead and trace the pattern with a half inch seam allowance around it. Now using the X-Acto knife, I can carefully cut these out. And then I'll do the same thing for the blue. I have uh, not worked with warp love before, so this is kind of funky. Ooh, just trying to make it curve a little bit. Yeah, okay, it cooled off a little bit, so I can kind of just make a nice little point. Oh. Uh, using the gloves is kind of tricky, but like also I don't want to burn myself. Before sewing the ears, it can be helpful to brush the fibers toward the center so they're less likely to get stuck in your stitches. Also, if you want to pre-cut or shave any of the hair that you know you'll be cutting later, uh, you can go ahead and do that too. It also helps to just kind of tuck the fibers in here with your finger, just so they're laying the right way. You can use a comb or brush to loosen any fibers that got caught in the seam. And then I'm going to flip it back inside out so that I can cut the seam allowance down so there's less bulk on the inside of the ear. Most animal ears are not this fluffy. They tend to have shorter hair at the top and maybe some longer hairs at the bottom. So I'm going to trim the fur on this ear using just some scissors. You can also use like a pet grooming tool if you happen to have one. Uh, but I'll just be using some scissors here. And I'm gonna leave a little tuft at the top because foxes tend to have a little bit of floof there. Remember not to cut it too short because you can always remove more hair later, uh, but you can't add hair back. Once you have trimmed your ear fur and are happy with the shape of the inner form, we can go ahead and glue this on the inside of the fur. Just be careful when you put hot glue on this because it'll become malleable again and you don't want to squish uh, the shape that you already have going. and then you can carefully trim away any excess fabric on the bottom. To add a little extra interest, I'm going to add a pop of teal eyeshadow to the center of the ears so they have a little bit more dimension. I've also read that you can use um, a watered down acrylic paint, but I didn't have quite the right color of acrylic paint, so I'm just gonna use eyeshadow. To attach the ears, I'm going to hot glue a wig hair clip to the underside. The ears are good to go. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough fabric to make a matching tail this time, but maybe that's something I can add in the future. On to the wig. 
I've ordered Arda's Ferrari in Fire Orange, and I already have leftover wefts in Fairy Blonde. I want to replace the bangs with blonde wefts and give them a little trim. Starting at the front, I'll clip back the hair so I can carefully remove each orange weft from the front. I'll take off a few at a time and replace each by pinning in a blonde weft and sewing it in with a back stitch using a curved needle. This can also be done with fabric or hot glue, but sewing will have the most durable hold. Adding and removing wefts is a tedious and long process, but it looks so cool in the end, it's worth the effort. I straightened the orange to make cutting length easier, then curled it up again with hair rollers and a steamer. I'll style the bangs with a swoop style and set them with heat from a steamer. This wig is good to go. Sunglasses from Amazon? Check. Finally, it's time to relax and wander the island. who your favorite villager is. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more fun content. Until next time, bye!